By subscribing today, you get the Fisherman Magazine every week, the chance to enter the Dreamboat Challenge, and unlock the great features of the new Fisherman website. Hi, I'm Joe Alves with the Fisherman Magazine, and today I'm going to tie for you one of my favorite patterns, the Clouser Minnow. One of the best things about this pattern is it's so versatile. You can tie it in a crayfish pattern to catch your smallmouth bass and other freshwater species, or you can tie it to look like a sand eel to handle anything you might encounter in the surf. Okay, so we're going to start here by taking our size 6 stainless steel mustad hook and put it in our vise. And our first step is we're going to lay a base of this fine monofilament thread down on the hook shank. Now the advantage of using this monofilament thread is it's going to disappear once we wrap it on top of our bucktail. So we're going to palmer that right back up to the top of the hook and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a set of bead eyes. I'm just using a little stainless steel bead eye here with some yellow and black enamel on it for an eye so you don't have to kind of save you a step. You don't have to come back later and paint that on. We're just going to use a series of figure eight wraps on here to hold this down. Okay, once you're satisfied that you've got enough wraps on there, just go ahead and take a little bit of your head cement or nail polish, whatever you prefer to use. I usually typically use nail polish because it's readily available in any CVS or any drugstore like that. And just want to put a little glue on there to help hold that in place. So our next step here is we're going to select a small clump of bucktail. We're going to use white in this instance. So we're just going to go ahead and trim that off right at the base of the tail and using our scissors or bodkin or whatever you happen to have handy we're going to go ahead and just pick out some of those guard hairs so we don't add a necessary bulk uh, to our fly okay so right now we're going to take that clump of bucktail that we just had and we're going to go ahead and we're going to very loosely work some wraps over the top of the hook shank here and now it's very important to not use a lot of pressure because this is deer hair it will actually spin and flare on you and it'll give you a fatter profile than we're looking for because we want this to look like a sand eel we want to keep this nice and thin so again just using very gentle pressure to just kind of fix this to the hook shank once we get up here again you don't want to put too much pressure on we're going to kind of pull back on our hair and we're going to sneak our thread back over our dumbbell eyes and start to build up a little bulk in front of them. For our next step, we're just going to pull this over and you kind of want to make a delicate balance of, of pressure here because you don't want to pull it so hard that it flares, but you need it to be nice and tight on top of these eyes. So we're just going to gently give it a couple of wraps right at the base of the eyes. This next step is very important. It'll help you get the profile that you want. You're going to want to take this hair here and you're going to cut it at a 45 degree angle. That way it'll form a nice base for your wraps as we continue on. So again, using a delicate balance of pressure here, we're going to start with some gentler wraps and then once we get things where they need to be, we can kind of add a little more pressure. Okay, so now we've have that all secured in front of the barbell eyes, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to flip this over in our vise in preparation to tie the top. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select another clump of bucktail. Uh, in this case we're going to go with chartreuse to give us a nice contrast uh, and it's also going to help us imitate a sand eel stand out really well in the wash. So again we're going to just get a similar sized clump and we're just going to trim it. And again we're going to go ahead and pick the guard hairs out of this. You know we want this to be uh, a sparser tied pattern. We want a nice and narrow pattern here to help imitate our, our thinner baits that we might encounter there. So once we get that, we're just going to go ahead and again we got to use a delicate bent balance of tension and tie this in right on top of the hook eye. Okay, so this is probably the only tricky part of this is just holding all your hair uh, on top of the shank and making it so it doesn't kind of wrap around on you but again not a big deal and after you do one or two of these you'll be it'll become second nature to you so we're just gonna go ahead and trim this down again we're gonna go for that 45 degree angle like we had on the bottom and then using our delicate balance of tension we're just gonna put a few gentle wraps here build up a nice thread head 
and then once we get everything kind of contained we'll go ahead and kind of crank down and apply a little more a little more pressure on it now we have a nice even thread base we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with the whip finisher now if you don't have commercially available whip finisher you can use the whip finish that I like to use take your fingers here and go one two three wraps and then using your fingers or your bodkin keep pressure on it as you pull tight so one two three and then using your fingers or a bodkin or your pair of scissors pull it tight maintaining pressure and the nice thing about that knot just give it a nice pull and you've broken it off right at your base take your head cement or nail polish whatever you prefer or have handy and just go ahead and give that a good coat and one of the things this will do is this will help that monofilament thread disappear and you'll only have the colors of the underlying bucktail visible. And that's our completed Clouser Minnow. The beauty of this pattern is that you can use a multitude of different materials, both synthetic and natural, such as the bucktail we just used today, or a bunch of different synthetic fibers that are available in the marketplace now to achieve different effects to imitate different bait fish. Tied even sparser than this, using a translucent material, you can imitate shrimps that may be uh, forage for these fish in the back bay, also a weak fish favorite uh, amongst the eelgrass, or you can use darker colors uh, for fishing this pattern in the evening. So even though you may be a first timer, don't be intimidated. This is a very easy tie. And surf guys, even though you might be throwing plugs, these make an excellent teaser.